integers are numbers that have no fractional component, like the number eight. Look at that beauty. Ooh. But what about a number like 0 0.8? Yikes. Problem here is we have a fractional piece. We have this 0.8. But don't worry, 0.8 may not be an integer, but it is rational, which means it can be expressed as a ratio between two other integers. In this case, 0.8 is equal to 8 over 10. 8 divided by 10. 8 and 10 are clearly both integers, which means that since 0.8 is equal to them, it is at least rational. It can be expressed as a ratio between two integers. Now, integers and rational numbers are beautiful. Ancient mathematicians loved them, but there's a problem. There were some things we could think of that didn't appear to be either. For instance, think of a square with side length one. Every side of this shape has a length of one. What is the length of this diagonal? I'll call this line C. Well, the Pythagorean theorem tells us that the length of C squared is equal to the length of this side squared plus the length of this other side squared. One squared plus one squared is just two. So c squared equals two, which means that c equals the square root of two. Perfect, all right, so the length of this diagonal is square root of two. What's the square root of two? It could be an integer, it could be rational. Um, well, one thing you could do is you could measure the diagonal of a perfectly drawn square of side one and measure it better and better and better so that you've got more and more precision. As you did that, you would accumulate new digits for your answer to the square root of two. And at each step of the way, you could find a ratio that equals that number. But here's the problem. Will you ever be done? Will you ever reach a point where you've reached the last digit in the decimal expansion of the square root of two? If you do, then it's a rational number. The numerator and denominator might be really big numbers, but who cares, at least it's not irrational, or is it? If it is, how do you prove that it is? Seems like the only way you could do it is by calculating for some unknown, possibly infinite amount of time, or making completely, infinitely precise measurements. Yikes. But here's what is so fantastic about our universe. We have been able to prove that the square root of two is not an integer and is not rational. And today, we're gonna do just that. But we need to cover four preliminaries so that this proof is nice and complete. The first thing I wanna do is define an even number. What is an even number? We all are very familiar with even numbers. Two, four, six, eight. Negative two, negative four, negative 68. These are all even numbers. What do they have in common? Well, they are divisible by two. That is a definition of evenness, which by the way means that zero is even because zero divided by two is just zero. There's no fractional piece left over, so zero is even. But one and negative one on either side are odd. And that's how numbers go. Even, odd, even, odd in that kind of a pattern. Let's look at this definition. An even number like eight is even because it can be evenly divided by two. 8 divided by 2 equals 4. 4 is a nice whole number. There's nothing left over. That's perfect. But what this also means is that 8 is equal to some number, in this case, 4, times 2. So here we have a nice generalized definition of an even number. A number is even if it can be expressed as 2 times some integer. I'll just call that integer c. And because the pattern of even, odd, even, odd is what it is, we can also define an odd number as being equal to two times any integer plus one. So negative 12 is even because negative 12 can be expressed as two times negative six, which is an integer. But negative 13, well, negative 13 is odd because it can be expressed as two times negative seven plus one. These are literally the definitions of even and odd. 
The next thing we need to do is show that if you take an even number and square it, the result will also be even. And if you take an odd number and square it, the result will always be odd. Now here's how we do that. Let's take an even number, which as we know is expressed by 2 times some integer, and let's square it. Now 2c squared equals 2 times c times 2 times c. It's just 2c times itself. This is equal to 4c squared. But what does 4c squared look like? We can pull a 2 out of there and wind up with 2 times 2c squared, all right? Uh-oh, look what we've got. This is 2 times some integer. We know that 2 times an integer is even, so this is an even number. An even number squared is even. Now, let's square an odd number. An odd number looks like this. It's 2 times any integer you like plus 1. Now, if we square this, we wind up with my, oh, my favorite thing, binomial multiplication. Let's take a look at this. We've got 2c plus 1, and it's squared, so we're multiplying it by itself. 2c plus 1 times 2c plus 1. Let's use FOIL to work this out. This means F. We will take. We will the, we'll find the product of the first two terms here. 2c times 2c is 4c squared. We actually already knew that. Then we're going to add to that the product of the outer terms, 2c times 1. Well, that's just 2c. We add to that the product of the inner terms, 1 times 2c, which is just 2c. And then finally we add the product of the last terms, 1 times 1, which is 1. This simplifies into 4c squared. 2c plus 2c is just 4c, and we've got this 1 on the end. Ooh, all right, now how about this? Let's pull a 2 out of this thing. 2 times 2c squared plus 2c. And then we've got this plus 1 at the end. Yowza! Look at this result. We have this thing right here in the parentheses, which is some integer, and we're multiplying it by 2, but then we're adding 1. This is the form of an odd number. So this is odd. An odd number squared is odd. An even number squared is even. Oh, how beautiful. Next, I want to talk about squaring rational numbers. Now, this is something that we've all learned before, but I want to prove it. When we have some fractions, like let's say a over b, and we want to multiply it by uh, itself. So we have a over b times a over b. This is pretty easy to do. You literally just find the product of the numerators, a squared, and divide them by the product of the denominators, b squared. Boom. Pretty simple. But how can we be sure that is true? Because after all, fractions can be a little bit weird, right? I mean, if I want to add a over b to a over b, I don't just add up the numerators and add up the denominators. Instead, I add up the numerators to a, and then I just keep the denominator the same. This is very different than this. What's going on? How can we be sure that we're doing this fraction multiplication correctly? Well, my favorite way to do this, since we already kind of have an idea that this is right, unless our teachers have been lying to us our entire lives, is to just take advantage of the fact that multiplication and division are inverse operations. So let's take two fractions. I will call one a over b, and I will multiply it by another fraction, c over d. What the heck is their product gonna look like? Well. Here is how we will make this easy. Let's go ahead and multiply their product by b times d and divide by b times d. Because multiplication and division are inverse operations, this won't change anything. If I multiply by some number and then divide by the same number, I haven't changed the thing I started with. So all of this junk is equal to what we're trying to study the product of a over b times c over d. Now, let's start associating and commuting all of these little things. We can do that in multiplication. So I can take this b here, for instance, and multiply it by the product of a b times c d, or I can take this b and multiply it just by a b and then bring in c over d. So let's do that, because if I take a over b and I multiply it by b, and then I multiply c over d, by that d, 
I still have to make sure I don't forget that I'm also dividing by BD. And would you look at this? Multiplication and division are inverse. So if you divide by B and then multiply by B, that's the same as just multiplying by one. So A stays the same. Same over here. Dividing by D and multiplying by D gives us C. So what we're left with is A times C divided by B times D. Ta-da! A over B times A over B equals the product of the numerator and the product of the denominator. Wonderful. We are now ready to really take a big bite out of rational numbers. Every single ratio of integers can be reduced to lowest terms. In fact, if you can imagine a ratio of integers that cannot be reduced to lowest terms, then it is not a ratio of integers. And we do this all the time when we're working with fractions. Take a look at a fraction like four sixths. That's beautiful. That is a totally legitimate ratio of integers, but it's not in lowest terms because there are factors shared by four and six. By a factor, I mean a number that evenly divides into them. What numbers evenly divide into four? Well, one, uh, two, uh, and four. Uh, what numbers evenly divide into six? Uh, well, one does, so does two, so does three, and so does six. Yowzas! There's a common factor of two. I can divide both of them by two. Now, dividing by two over two is the same as dividing by one. So this ratio won't change, it'll just be in simpler terms. Four divided by two is two, six divided by two is three, and boom, two thirds. This is a very pretty looking fraction. It is equal to four sixths, but the neat thing about it is that it is, in a way, complete, because it's a ratio between two integers that are co-prime. Co-prime means that two numbers do not share any factors except for one. The factors of two are one and two, and the factors of three are one and three. They share none in common but one, so they are co-prime. Every single ratio between two integers can be reduced to a ratio between co-prime integers. Here's another example, uh, 14 fifteenths. This one doesn't feel as pretty, but it's done. These are lowest terms. The factors of 14 are one, two, uh, seven, and 14. The factors of 15 are one, three, five, and 15. The only factor they share in common is one, so they are co-prime. 14 fifteenths is in lowest terms. It is a reduced fraction. I love it. The key here is that every single ratio of integers can be reduced to a ratio between co-prime integers. If the square root of two is indeed rational, it should be two. So here we begin our proof that the square root of two is in fact irrational. We do this by contradiction. We just start off by assuming that the square root of two is rational, which means it really does equal the ratio between two integers. We'll call them A and B. We don't know what they are, but we're just assuming they exist. If that's true, then A over B squared should equal two. That's the definition of a square root. We've also shown that a fraction squared means, of course, A over B times A over B. And when you multiply fractions, you literally just find the product of the numerators, A times A is A squared, and the product of the denominators, B times B is B squared. So A squared over B squared should equal two if the square root of two is rational. Now we can rearrange this by uh, uh, multiplying both sides by b squared. This gives us a squared equals two b squared. Oh my goodness gracious. Look at that. Look at that. Now b squared is some integer. We don't know what it is, but it's being multiplied by two, which means that this term is even. It's divisible by two. This is the definition of an even number. Where's my even page? Oh yeah, look. An even number, as we said, is two times some integer. This is two times some integer. So two b squared is clearly even. But if it is even and it is equal to a squared, then a squared must also be even. Now we know that an even number squared is even. So if a squared is even, then a must be even as well. Now that's pretty interesting. It means that we can represent 
a as two times some integer. Let's call it, um, let's call it c. I think that'll be clear enough. And then let's take this uh, representation of a and plug it right back into this equation. So if a is 2c, then we have a squared. So that means 2c squared equals 2b squared. Now this 2c squared is just 2 times c times 2 times c. So 4c squared equals 2b squared. Good. Uh, oh, we can divide both sides by 2. So that 2 goes away and this 4 becomes a 2. Now, oh my goodness gracious, look what we have. Now we have 2 times c squared, which is some integer. Well, this is divisible by 2. So this is even. But if this is even and it's equal to b squared, then b squared must also be even. And since an even number squared creates an even number, b must be even. And here we have our result. A must be even and B must be even. But if both of them are even, they cannot be co-prime because they both share two as a common factor. This could go on forever because every ratio of integers must be reducible to the ratio between two co-prime integers and this one can't. The square root of two is not rational. This result is beautiful because what we're able to do in this proof is learn, discover something about our universe using just mathematics and logic inside our own minds without looking at the universe itself. Stay curious. And as always, thanks for watching.